This video is brought to you by the Farmer Klein YouTube channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Hello everybody, welcome back to the Farming Simulator 22 Map First Impressions video. Today we're going to take a look at Akuring Home Field. At least that is my butchered attempt to pronounce this map name, and I'm not going to try it anymore. This map can be found at the FarmingSimulator.com website or the in-game downloadable content menu. And as of the 1.0 release, this map is available for all platforms. Now, let me read you a little bit of the description. Welcome to map name here. This map is almost a one-to-one -one replica of the real life area. Map name here is a district of the first part of the map name here and is located in the beautiful second part of the map name is dropped off here, but it is the Northern region of Germany. That's the location where this map is set. So this is a German map. On this map, you'll find two cow farms, a biogas plant. We have a chicken, chicken fattening area, pig farm. We have a fertilizer and seed factory, 60 fields, grain mill, pallet production, village roads and fields, AI traffic, and this map is listed as being compatible with precision farming. Now, let's talk about one of the biggest monkeys in the room here with this map. There are 23 required mods. 23. So I highly suggest you download this map from the in-game downloadable content menu because of the fact that that will download all of the required mods for you automatically. You're not gonna to have to click on each and every single one of them. Make sure you download them all and put them into your mod folder. Those required mods are the arched buildings pack. We have the map itself. We have the big machines hall. We have the bunker silo kit. We also have the bunker silo set. We have the chicken coop, the composite machine sheds, the concrete bunker set U, the cow shed 42 by 22, cow shed three plus three, the crop storage pack, the Dutch pig shed, the Dutch shed pack, EU factories, we have the farm silo package. We are also using the modern barn, the old brick building pack, the old farm package, the pallet factory, the cell, saw, sorry, sawmill, seed and fertilizer production, system hall, and the workshop pack. Now, in addition to that, the precision farming mod is listed as a required mod. And I'm sorry, I want to debate this right here. Precision farming should never be a required mod for a map because quite frankly, a map will play 100% perfectly fine without precision farming. The map can have precision farming if a player wants to use it, but in no way should it ever require precision farming because some people will just, they don't like precision farming and therefore they're not gonna touch this map if it's gonna force them to use precision farming. Now, in addition to those required mods, we are going to use the mods we typically use when we take a look at maps, additional field info, additional game settings, field lease, and field calculator, as well as precision farming. Let's go ahead and pull up the log and talk about what happens if we load this map up in farm manager mode or start from scratch. In both of those play modes, you're going to find all the farms are built out exactly how you're going to see them here in new farmer mode, with the exception we do not own any land in those alternate play modes and we do own machinery we also own the starting machinery in all play modes so that's very important to understand now another very polarizing aspect of this map is going to be its lighting we have extremely dark shadows on this map it's eight in the morning i can't even tell that we're looking here at a building because it's so darn dark. Would you believe that there's a road right here? Well, other than the fact that we got traffic on it, hard to tell because you can't see anything. Now, I know some folks are going to be very turned off at those dark shadows. Some folks are going to be turning off the video right now and deciding this map is definitely not for them as a result of that. I did want to point that out right away because I even think those dark shadows are a little bit extreme. For example, let's go ahead and run over here real fast before we get into the rest of the video content. This is our cow barn at the starting farm. It's eight in the morning. The sun's out. We can't see a darn thing in this barn unless we put on our flashlight. We supposedly have lights in here. I don't know where the light switch is. Maybe they're automatic lights. They come on when it supposedly gets too dark. Well, I'm saying it's too dark now. Turn on the lights. 
All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the PDA. We are dealing with a standard size or a fairly standard size PDA here. We do have all of the standard crop types available to us in Farm Sim 22. And if we take a look at our lands, we start out by owning Farm ID 54. That is going to be our starting farm. It is a cow farm. We also own Field 52 or Farm Land ID 52, which is a grass meadow. We also own Farm ID 30, Farm ID 3 as well. And then we have a huge section of, kind of the typical unbuyable land, which includes all of the road network, the town, the houses, and a fair bit of the exterior of the map. Now, it is listed as $10,781,000. We cannot sell this because we do have some placeables on this unbuyable land. In fact, on this unbuyable land, we have our chicken coop. We also have a pallet sell point and a pallet factory included on this particular unbuyable land. Now, in theory, if we sold those, we might be able to get ourselves a cool $10 million at the very start by selling all of this other land that, quite frankly, we probably really don't even need. In addition to our starting farm, we have two other farms, or sorry, three other farms located on this map. We have our starting cow farm. We also have an arable farm here at farm ID 64 for $52,300. We have a pig farm at farm ID 58, and then it's going to be purchased for $75,312. And then we have a large cow farm here at farm ID 22, which is going to be able to be bought for $287,000. This map also includes a biogas plant, which is at farm ID 53. It can be purchased for $49,000 as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at our farmland lease screen. The farmland lease screen is going to show us all of the viable farmlands, how large those farmlands are, and how much those farmlands are going to cost, and if those farmlands include any fields, which field or field numbers they also include. We're going to go ahead and slowly scroll through this list. At any point in time, you can pause the video to take a closer look at the individual farmlands, how large they are, what fields they include, and how much they're going to cost. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our field calculator screen. We use this screen to show us how large each individual specific field is. And then we can go and cross-reference this with our farmland lease screen to then understand what it's going to cost us to get any particular field that we are looking at. Let's go ahead and take a look and see how the standard generic soil map is being applied to this map. In fact, I'm rather surprised that we have the generic soil map on the fields here because of the fact that precision farming once again is listed as a required mod would have thought for sure that the map author would have put in a custom soil map but no if you take a look at the soil map how it's applied here this is the generic soil map if we look in the log we'll also see it listing as loading up the generic soil map take a look at our crop counter we do have the standard crop counter available to us on this map and if we look at our prices screen, you will see that we do indeed have the ability to sell all of our base game crops that we can sell. We also have the ability to sell our eggs, wool, and milk. But for whatever reason, we do not have our ability to sell wood chips, nor do we have the ability to sell grass, hay, or straw. As we come down here to our production items, we do have the ability to sell all of the base game production items on this particular map but we are missing the ability to buy bulk lime. We also do not have a stone crusher on this map. So if you do play with stones enabled, you will need to put down your own stone crusher. And then in addition to that, looking down through all of the platinum expansion, we would need to put down our silver run forest marketplace in order to sell any of the platinum expansion that we may put down on the map. If we are also playing with pumps and hoses, we do not have the ability to sell separated manure. And this map does have an additional production item in the ability to produce pallets. And there you can see the sell point for the pallet production. This map does start out with a decent list of starting equipment that again is available in all play modes. All of it is owned, none of it is leased. We do have some animals at the start, or some animal pins at the start, I should say. We have the 3 plus 3 cow shed, the 42 by 22 cow shed, and the chicken coop. 
This map does have contracts available. We start out by owning the seed and fertilizer factory, the pallet factory, the grain mill, and the sawmill. In fact, we start out by owning all of the production chains other than the biogas plant. And speaking of those production chains, you can see that we have the ability to make seed with wheat, barley, oat, with liquid fertilizer, as well as with slurry. We also have the ability to make solid fertilizer with manure and water. We have the ability to make pallets out of logs. Then we have our standard grain mill. And then with respect to our sawmill, we have the ability to make planks and wood chips. But again, we have no way of selling those wood chips. So hopefully they don't build up too terrible much or we will have to put our own cell point down. This map does not also have any collectibles. Let's go ahead and take a look at our starting fleet. We start out with the small Fint Vario 311 and the Steyr 8150 trackers. We have the top liner 4090H harvester that is paired up with the 4090H grain header and 4090H header trailer. We have the Schaefer 2630 front loader. We have the Brantner DD24073 slash 2XXL trailer, as well as the Brantner TA23065 slash 2 power tube plus trailers. We have the Agramas POV5XL plow. We have the Torino 3FX cultivator. We have the Amazon KG3001 super power harrow. That is actually paired up with the 3000 super cedar. We have the Power Roll 1230HD Dalbo roller. We have the Amazon ZATS3200 three point hitch fertilizer spreader. We have a pallet fork, but no front loader arms. Oh, sorry, we have a front loader itself. So we do not need the front loader arms. Thought we had an interesting little problem there, but nope, we do not. And if we take a look at our mods and DLCs, you will see that we do not have any custom vehicles or implements that are a part of this particular map. We do have, though, with the seed and fertilizer production mod that is listed as a required mod, the ability to buy a pallet of liquid fertilizer. Now, we are already at our starting farm here. We loaded in over here at what I would project to be our farmhouse. But we do not have a sleep trigger on this map. So let's just kind of run down the street once again to our kind of starting farm area. We have a cow farm here and I'm just gonna turn on the flashlight for the bulk of this map tour. This facility will hold 200 cows. We have our milk trigger located right there. Inside the cow barn, we have our food trough. And then we have our straw trigger also. We have our slurry point. We have our harvester header. We have an RTK building. Now I guess with precision farming not enabled, then this building would not appear. But if it's listed as required, you might not even be able to load this map without precision farming, which again is rather polarizing. I think there might be a, a core set of players that would just ignore the map as a result of being forced to play with precision farming. So we have one of our machine sheds here. More of our machinery kind of scattered around. We have slurry storage. And then deep back in here, we also have another slurry storage extension tank. Across the street, we have more implement storage. And then we have a silage bunker for our cows. Now, as far as our farms being customizable, for the most part, they are. 
In fact, here at the starting farm, we can pretty much sell all of the buildings here at the starting farm. We can also sell our fence that runs around these farm buildings. And in fact, we can sell the fence that runs around the fields also. So if we own the fields, for example, if we own this field right here, we could sell the fence that circles this field, which means if you are playing this map and you don't like fences around fields, well, just sell them. Or if you are having difficulty getting into the field through the gate, well, just sell the gate, open up the area by selling off parts of the fence, and you're good to go. Let's go ahead and just kind of maybe demonstrate that fact by buying this hawk of land. Let's go over here and check out our meadow. And of course our meadow does not have a fence. Let me buy this field across the street and I'll just demonstrate that for you real fast. Now we do have the ability to sell pretty much any field that is kind of gated in here. So now that we own farmland at 61, let's get over here where I can see the fence. We can go to demolish and just open the field up. Just like that. And now we've got a big hole in our fence. I'm going to go ahead and get set up for the fly around. We're going to fly around the map and then we're going to come back to the shop, get in our Manhander and drive around to all the various points of interest and the other farms. As we get a little bit of altitude, we'll go ahead and just kind of do a little 360 rotation with the main map PDA pulled up. The map has some rolling fields, some rolling hills. It's definitely not flat. That's also the fields and hills are not overly steep. You got a nice kind of ratio of field land to forest. But again, we have such dark shadows on this map that it might be fairly difficult even in the high noon in order to see unless you're out in the clear sun. So we have our starting farm here. But again, we can sell pretty much everything that we have at the starting farm, including the fence, which is always good to see. To the south, we have some fairly large sized fields. Down below, we have our pallet factory as well as the pallet cell point and then the chicken coop. Remember, these are on the land that we own at the start, the large and viable area that we typically would have that is circling around the map in the road networks and such. If we sell these three buildings, we might be able to sell that for a cool 10 million plus dollars. Across the street from that, we have a factory. And this, I believe, is the seed and fertilizer factory. Yes, we have the seed and fertilizer factory located right there. We have some storage buildings. We have the large cow farm we're going to circle back to. Then we have field two, which we own at the start. Vehicle shop is directly ahead. Coming up here to where the chicken area is, we will need to buy the chicken farm for those triggers to show up. Here we have our sawmill. Here we have the, sorry, the chicken farm, the pig farm. 
everything here at the pig farm can be sold. Let's make our way back to the cow farm. Because this large cow farm does have a few buildings that we can not sell. I want to point those out to you. So as far as buildings, we cannot sell here at the cow farm. This building right here is permanent. On the farm, including this, I guess this is like a wash area, possibly. And then I believe this building is also permanently placed on the map. There's a couple buildings permanently placed on the map here, and I really am drawing a blank as to exactly which ones they are. It might be this one here. And then that one. Yeah, I think it's this one because it's also including these calf igloos. So it's calf igloos, that building, and this building here at the green siding is permanently embedded on the map. Even if we own that, we cannot sell it. Over here, just south of field 30, we have the arable farm that I'm calling it. Basically, we have two silage bunkers, then we have two large machine sheds and a fuel station. We can sell everything here with the exception of this retaining wall. That retaining wall is permanently a part of the map. We cannot sell it, but we can sell the two bunkers and we can sell the two sheds we can sell the fencing, and we can sell the fuel pump. We make our way up to the biogas plant. And here at the biogas plant, we have two large three-sided bunkers. We have a building, and then we have the BGA itself. Now, in my testing of the map earlier, when I did my kind of reconnaissance look around the map, if you buy the land, you will own the biogas plant. The triggers will pop up here. Okay, and we can make use of it. Now, you can sell the BGA after you own it. But there's a caveat. And if you sell the BGA, the triggers go away, but the building stays. So with pumps and hoses, Right? It's nice to have the ability to sell the in game BGA and put your own down. But we cannot do that here. We can buy the BGA, we can sell the triggers, but these large building structures are going to remain in this area. And then off, way off to the west, we have our animal dealer. And then we have another grain cell point. So you can see that way off the distance over here. Now I think the reason we don't have the ability to sell our hay, straw, or grass is because we don't have a animal dealer cell point. We just have the animal dealer trigger itself right here. Again, such, such dark shadows on this map. Then we have our grain cell point located right there. So I'm going to make my way quickly back over to the vehicle shop. And as we're going back to the vehicle shop, we'll talk a little bit about our scoring. We're going to give the map a full point. We do have five production items built in. So we're going to give the map a full point there with respect to production items being built in. Once again, we have the BGA. We have a seed and fertilizer factory. We have a pallet factory. We have a grain mill and a sawmill. With respect to having the ability to sell our base game crops, production outputs, and ammo outputs, we are gonna give the map three quarters of a point there because we are missing the ability to sell our grass, hay, straw, and wood chips. We also do not have the ability to buy bulk line, but we typically are not taking points away for that. We also do not have the ability to process our stones. So if you are playing with stones enabled, you will need to put down your own stone crusher. And we do not have the ability to sell separated manure. Again, if you're playing with pumps and hoses. 
Down here at the vehicle shop, we have our shop trigger. And I think one of the things you're probably going to notice here in the video is our shop and the, well, the brick down here on the ground. It's kind of some low textures here. So with respect to buildings, right, where appropriate are using the new texture technique as well as ground textures and such. I'm going to give the map three quarters of a point there because while most of the buildings are using the new texturing technique, and for example, this house over here and many of the houses on the map are using the new 3D window in technique. We do have other areas of the map which are showing their age with respect to the ground texture and then the wall textures of the buildings. So over here we have our workshop trigger, our dealer trigger for customized sell, repair, trade, repaint, and such. Now you notice that this does not have any markers. So that's where our trigger is going to be located right there. We can see that nice box, but I would like to go ahead and see those markers on the ground. Before we get to our drive around, I want to go ahead and I guess take a look at our various build mode. Since we have so many required mods on this map, no doubt there is going to be a plethora of sheds, silos, silos, extensions, and other such things that we can put down because, again, we have a whopping 23 required mods on this particular map. I mean, just look at the silage bunkers alone. Base game silo extensions. We've got a few containers here with the farm silo package. We have several wood shop package mods for our workshops. And we have the old farm package for our farmhouses. We also have some custom production mods built in here. We have the chicken coop, the EU factories. We have the pallet factory, sawmill, and seed and fertilizer production. We have the pallet factory still point. Base game greenhouses, orchards, and generators. We also have several custom animal pins that are part of this map, either built in or just tossed in as added required mods. Base game decoration. And then as far as landscaping goes, we've got a pretty decent list of paintable ground textures. We've got our fairly standard paintable plants and we have our standard FS-22 trees. Let's go ahead and make our way around this fine map. Again, I feel like I probably need to drive around with my headlights on because the map itself is fairly dark. Let's make our way up here to the pig farm. We'll need to buy the pig farm once we get up in here. So we have the pig farm over here to our left. But first we'll take a detour to the sawmill. So here at the sawmill we have our pallet spawn point. We have our interactive trigger. Again, we own the sawmill at the start. We have our wood chip output pipe on the side. We have our dump point for our logs and we have our wood cell trigger right there. Well, we'll just pop out of there, deal with that later. Let me go ahead and buy the pig farm and we'll take a look closer look at it. 
So here at the pig farm, we've got a little storage shed. A silo where we can bring in seed, mineral feed. We have our pig barn. 300 pigs in this facility. On the back, we have our slurry point as well as our food trigger. Yeah, plenty of vehicle and implement storage. And all of these sheds can be sold. You can also get rid of the fits. I've also gone ahead and taken the liberty of purchasing the other farms and the BGA on this map because I did want to also demonstrate what I was talking about the BGA with respect to only being able to sell the triggers and not the actual buildings itself. We have our large cow farm over here. And here we have one of the base game silo systems. So we have our dump point and our fill point. One of the composite machine shed buildings here. We have two large drive through silage bunkers. We have our manure heap. And we have our cow building. So we have our slurry point. We have our milk trigger. We have our food trough, and then we have our milk, I'm sorry, not our milk, but our cow buy point. 104 cows in this building. And then again, as far as what we can sell and what we can't sell, we cannot sell this green shed. We can also cannot sell some of these decorative items. I think they may be tied to the shed. The cow igloos are permanent as well as this building. We have a slurry point. That is the large cow farm. Oh, brutal traffic. It's probably because it's so dark. They can't see anything. They don't have their headlights on. Put your headlights on for safety. Jeez, people. Here we have our grain mill. So we have our dump point. We have our pallet spawn point as well as our interactive trigger. We have our seed and fertilizer production over here on our left. So we have our dump point, we have our fill pipe, we have our pallet spawn point, and then our interactive trigger is around the back door here. It is a usable storage barn. Across the street from that, we have our pallet factory. So we have our interactive icon, we have our dump point, we have our wood cell trigger, 
we have our pallet spawn point. And then at the same area, we have our pallet cell point located right here. And we have our chicken coop. And this is not, I believe, your everyday chicken coop. I believe this is also a production facility. We will get a little confirmation here in a moment. So we have our dump point. Oh, this is a real chicken coop. It's off to the side. 1,500 chickens in this facility. Can we open the gate? So we have our egg spawn point. We have our chickens in here. And then we have our food trough. Now, the reason I thought that that was a not a real chicken coop is because I'm pretty sure here under productions there is a chicken coop that just makes manure and it looks very much just like that. So that particular mod must have a real chicken coop and then just a manure producing chicken coop. Directly over here to the left is our starting farm. So starting farm is right there. And in fact, where we started this map out is located right here at this house. It's 11 o'clock and it's not, oh my gosh, it's not too terrible dark in here, but it's still deep, deep shadows. Now, almost right across the street from this career star point, we have then what I'm calling the arable farm. Because there are no animals here. Then we have two silage bunkers, two machine sheds, and then our fuel point. I missed the turn off into here because it was kind of tucked away with a bunch of grass. That is right there. Uh, we go ahead and make our way up here to the biogas plant. Kind of like how the biogas plant also has a little bit of a solar farm associated with it. So here we have the biogas plant. We have the large three-sided bunkers, the machine shed, and then we have our triggers. So we have our digester. We have our interactive icon. And you can see we do indeed own the biogas plant. Dump point, we have our drop off point for our slurry. Then we have our digestate point over there. But let me show you. If we come in here into build mode. We say sell it. Yes, I want to sell it. Oh! Triggers went away. The digester went away. But these two big buildings are still here. So not quite what you may be expecting if you sell the biogas plant. Now, as we make our 
way over to the final two points of interest, which is going to be the animal dealer and the one of the grain sell points. Let's do a final rundown of the score. Remember, we gave the map a full point with respect to production being built in because there are five production items built into the map. We also are going to give the map just three quarters of a point with respect to being able to sell all of the base game production items, crops, and animal outputs because we do not have the ability to sell our wood chips, nor do we have a sell point for grass, hay, or straw. The farms can mostly be customizable, but there are a few buildings here and there that cannot be sold. I do like the fact that we can also sell the fences around any and all fields, which is nice to see. But we are going to give the map just three quarters of a point there also, because again, not all buildings are going to be able to be sold. Not all decorative elements are going to be able to be sold at the various player farms. With respect to buildings, using the new texturing technique, we are going to give the map once again three quarters of a point there. While most of these buildings are using the new texturing technique, there are a few on the map like the shop and the kind of pavers, the brick pavers at the shop area that are using an older kind of flatter texturing technique. And they really does end up standing out when you compare it to the other textures that are using the more modern techniques next to those. But then lastly, player and interactive areas being clearly marked. Once again, we're going to the map just three quarters of a the point there. The map comes so, so close to hitting it on four of our five metrics. The reason we're doing that is, well, at the vehicle shop, we don't have those indicators showing us delineations where the dealer trigger is and we have a few other areas on the map where we also don't have specific trigger areas marked and here we have our animal dealer so overall we're going to give the map a score of four out of five still a rather respectable score nonetheless we have our grain and dump point And there we go. So guys, let me know down in the comments below, what do you think of this particular map? Is this a map you're gonna be adding to your playlist? Are you bothered by the 23 required mods, including precision farming for this particular map? And are you bothered by the apparent change in the lighting with the extremely, extremely dark shadows that we have here in the morning hours not too terrible bad here now that it's 11.30 in the morning. But man, 8 o'clock in the morning, it is dark. To the point where you pretty much always need to have your flashlight on or your headlights. And until next time, happy farming.